14 Kilometers is a non-profit NGO based in Berlin and we are working for intercultural exchange and cooperation between Europe and the MENA region. MENA region means uh, Middle East and North Africa. The reason why we're doing Rel Exchange, an international interreligious youth project between Germany and Egypt, is because we think that the topic of religion is very important for both countries and also, also for the uh, interrelation between the two countries. Because uh, as we could see in the, in the course of the Egyptian Revolution um, and also shortly after, there was lots of conflicts in Egypt uh, between uh, members of different religious groups. And also in Germany we've got a big problem with um, not only anti-Semitism but also Islamophobia and uh, this is why we think that um, this is a topic that should be addressed and it should also be addressed um, with participants of both regions. We have 20 um, participants from Germany and Egypt taking place in this project, 10 young Germans and 10 young Egyptians. And um, they are working together um, during the two exchange weeks uh, on different topics to do with religion and also the question of um, religious minorities and majorities in the two countries, Germany and Egypt. I think interfaith and interreligious dialogue is very important because we see in, in, in the modern time, times that are, there are still many conflicts and many people suffering from uh, cases like religious war and religious conflict. And so I think this, the opportunity to um, practice exchange is, is really good and really helpful to maybe achieve um, a better place, a better place for religion in society. The most important experience that I might m made in this project is um, what goes around comes around. So be open. If you are go going to be open to others, uh, they will be open and then you can uh, exchange your thoughts. People in my village would say that Muslims are dangerous and that Jews, I don't know, they are very critical against other religions. Everything is very Catholic, so I just wanted to break out of this. I think the best experience was visiting the three prayer houses, church, mosque and synagogue, because we really could see every religion has its own background, its own tradition, but it has a right to exist. Seventy percent with a Turkish background coming to this mosque, and we have the other thirty, um, some Germans, some Arabs, wherever from. And um, Berlin now has um, approximately, they say, about one hundred mosques, or let's say, masjid, smaller praying rooms. It's only a few ones with, with the traditional architecture of a mosque. Um, uh, smaller rooms, praying, praying rooms, they have about 100. And then some are, let's say, from a Tunisian community, some Egypt, Syrians, whatsoever. And, uh, but the biggest group are, is the, are the Muslims from Turkey. When it comes to the prayer itself, which is 5 to maximum 10 minutes, that will be always in Arabic language. And that's something of, uh, because that's something unifying. Uh, whether I'm, if I'm going to travel to Egypt, I could uh, easily join the community and pray together with them. Uh, if I go to Turkey or wherever, I can join them and pray with them. But all the speeches and everything around, that will be then in Arabic, in Turkish, German, whatever. I guess for most of you it's, it's clear that there are some things that churches and, and mosques and synagogues, they have in common and some things they are, are a little bit different. Yeah, media methods actually was one of uh, the very interesting and useful uh, method we have used. Um, it also included two things to also searching the media and how the media uh, serve the idea of oppression and discrimination against the minorities, either political minorities or religious minorities. So uh, they discovered a lot and they were able also to see the difference between different media types like international media and the local media at both countries. So it was, it, was, it was very important for them as well, they got a lot. Very, very important place for many reasons. One of those reasons that Anna Frank, she was a bit younger than you at the same uh, age. So, and she did something amazing. What we see here is not like a, a theory of Judaism or something, but it's really a, a human, it's a model of uh, how Judaism was treated in, in the Nazi regime in Germany. So that's what I think is, is really 
interesting, yeah, because it's related to people, to humans. So if it's just the Leica model and we can think about it later, how religion that should be should unite people can can take us to such a very horrible model to see people are killed and run and killed and someone follow them. So and you can imagine how hard feeling um, for example someone like Anna and all Annas everywhere all over the world and how much they suffer through that. I thought it was interesting to have me here in this round. That's why I applied because um, there is a new perspective I, I brought maybe in, in this group. The one of being a German, completely German, but with a different faith. So people couldn't say, tell me, go out of our country. So there is no reason for discrimination. Um, and I think inter like r different religions are very interesting. I've throughout my whole life been dealing with, with them. I think it was very nice that we visited the different uh, religious worship places. Um, especially for me, it was interesting to see uh, the synagogue because I feel it is very difficult to be in touch with the Jewish community and I think it's very interesting and especially me as a Muslim, I can only say that the Jewish, the Jews and, and, and Muslims have a lot in common. I know some, some information about Islam, uh, so uh, I think uh, the Jewish community and the Baha'i community uh, are getting closer to me with some useful information. That you are here as Egyptians and come here to this place that warms my heart, I must say. That's what I have to say. Close with that. Um, it's so hard in Egypt to, to get to know each other in these religions, so I think here is a useful experience to be here. So we worked with methods of the theater of the oppressed, and it's a method that was invented by Augusto Boal, also because of political reasons. And yeah, and the idea of that method is um, there are always uh, oppressed people and people who oppress others. And we wanted to find out in, uh, with this kind of method um, who is the oppressor, who is going to be oppressed also in this kind of theme. And the, the benefit of this, um, of this method is, um, yeah, you don't talk, but you play. And uh, the idea is sometimes it's, um, it's easier to, to find truth in a picture because maybe maybe it's not that easy to talk about it and also because um, maybe you don't even know it so that's why you can't talk about it and in the pictures you see it. In some reflections some people said um, some of them said they expected to have a lot of information and then they said what is much more important to them now, and that's also what they get here, uh, is the exchange part. So um, it's, it's not a religion they meet, but it's people. And that's important. They have learned to work together, which I find very interesting. And they also have uh, developed themselves techniques and methods to understand each other and to anticipate their, what they bring, what each one of them brings. And uh, this is something that I think for us as, as teamers is very important also to see, to watch and to possibly try to adapt ourselves as much as we can. It's isn't it? At the end, all an illusion. Believe in yourself. Love with no doubt Believe in yourself Love with no doubt We will uh, make a, a dance move created by those two <laughs> 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 I applied for this project because I, I thought it was really, really interesting that uh, uh, seeing other people's perspective about uh, their own religion and about other, my religion. Uh, when you see people doing something, you don't understand what they're doing unless you understand their beliefs. So um, I, I like the idea of having a dialogue with uh, open-minded people and uh, 
uh, discussing different things. And if you don't like something, you can frankly say that you, you don't like it and you don't understand it, so they can explain their uh, point of view. So it, it was an amazing idea. That's why I applied. Yeah. I love the GPS tool we had in Berlin. That was amazing. Uh, I love the people. People here, here are amazing. And, um, uh, the discussions are very good so far. Most of the places it's better to walk to them. Mm -hmm. uh. You make the route by yourself. It's not a free given uh -huh. route. Yeah. You okay. choose the stations that you want to do. Oh, okay. Well, we uh, religious okay? minorities had to be put outside of the center. That's what they said at the other church. Uh -oh. Oh. No, it's okay. Reported. Okay. Okay, this one. Okay, let's go. I had this chance because I'm a feminist to uh, talk to someone who are who's speaking about uh, Islamic feminism, which is Dr. Umayma Abubak, which is a little bit controversial. Still, I had my own concerns as well, uh, but it was it's good to to hear the other side of the story. It was great to have such an important and knowledgeable person speak to us, and I learned a lot from her because. For example, she explained to us where all the oppression of women, some people think there's in Islam comes from, but actually it's not in the Quran, but it's groups that have di different interpretations of the Quran that are not actually true, not right. One of the places that we have visited in Coptic Cairo was the Orthodox Church and uh, the, uh, the, 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 I mean the Greek Orthodox Church, which was very interesting for many different reasons. St. George, the one who was there in this church, he was tortured and there were like uh, even uh, a cell that he was imprisoned in and we were able to visit this cell and it was very interesting to be there. When we visited Coptic Cairo I was very impressed by the hanging church because it's actually built on an old fortress and I thought it was really cool to see how they reused the space and that from the church they adapted to the old building and it looked very interesting and I was amazed by the way this church was built and to see all the new symbols and old symbols inside the church. I think going to the citadel was also a very interesting uh, experience that we had. Well, this citadel is very symbolic for many different reasons. First of all, when you are there, you can really see the skyline of the whole Cairo. And when you are there, you can always be able to distinguish many, you can easily see many, many, many different norms of life in Cairo just by standing there. You can see the mosque in front of the church, you can see Al-Azhar University, you can see the very tall buildings on the Nile Tower that are now has nothing to do with the, the, the original or the, the old uh, authentic city. Uh, second thing which was interesting also is when you enter, in, when you enter the, the, the mosque itself and look around the mosque, the mosque has been built during the Ottoman Empire, so it has a lot of inspiration as an architecture from the Ottoman Empire. But when you try to understand the or why, what was the original concept that were this mosque built on, you will find that it's back to the Byzantine age, Byzantine era, which was the, the, the church of Hagia Sophia in Turkey. So it was originally a church, and then this church were the main inspiration for building this type of mosques that now are so much visible and available in Turkey. And this is the model that we have in Egypt for this type of a mosque and this type of an architecture that were originally generated by a Christian faith architecture. Like the architecture itself was a Christian person. So When we were in a mosque in the citadel, I actually joined the evening prayer with uh, Muslim friends. It was an experience I had never experienced before. It felt very different from what I know from Catholic churches. With Adrian was simulating a prayer. That was really nice because this is the very essence of religion. It's about spirituality, not about the practice, because the practice at the end of the day is something which is materialistic. Religion is not about something which is materialistic, it's about the soul. 
In the program, when we uh, planned the program in the beginning, it was one of the ideas mentioned that we have to not always be the, as the ones who are co-facilitating the program. It doesn't always have to be us who are uh, talking about religions or pr perspectives, it's because by the end of the day, it's not necessarily us that we are representing these religions. So uh, we thought of bringing people who, fr who are from different uh, religious institutions in Egypt so we will not need to speak on their behalf. They just can come and express themselves to the participants directly without any sort of barrier. So that's why we have, it happened during the program that we invited different keynote speakers. Among these keynote speakers were a speaker from uh, the Ministry of Endowment and uh, another speaker were from the ev uh, Evangelical uh, Church. And uh, both of them, they had a very nice uh, time with the participants uh, expressing their opinions and their statements on the Egyptian society and the current and nowadays affairs. My parents are from Afghanistan and they kind of uh, were raised with the Islam but um, they didn't really tell me so much about it. This is why I really um, wanted to know more about it and just educate myself. Yesterday, we finally started to think about ways we can use the knowledge we gained throughout the whole two weeks. And it was very interesting because we, came, we thought about which areas we can influence to make the things better, the problems we saw with interreligious relationships and dialogue and everything. And then we came up with four different groups, four different approaches to this problem, how to solve them. And what I really liked about it that we made a concrete plan, multiple steps, and came up with a whole project to solve this problem, and then presented it to the whole group, and got some feedback on it, and found out where we have to work on it, what we have to watch out for when we actually want to do this project, and it was very interesting. I'm amazed by the group spirit here because actually I've never had this feeling that everyone in this group is super friendly to everyone. We are all great friends and we really understand each other and can talk about anything. So there are a lot of very interesting conversations with the others. And I have learned a lot from all these people. They come from different places, different backgrounds, but we all get along very well.